everyone. Welcome to our conversation today, which is happening in the context of our current exhibition, Beverly Buchanan, Northern Walls and Southern Yards at Andrew Edlin Gallery here in New York City on 2 and 2 Bowery. I am delighted to be joined with Prudence Lop and Jane Bridges, two lifelong friends of Beverly Buchanan, who knew her in very distinct periods in her life. Jane Bridges from 1968, which predates all of the works in this show, <laughs> and a lot of her art career to 2015, when Beverly Buchanan passed away, and Prudence Lop for over 20 years, over 30 years, and Athens as her really closest friend. We're really excited for both ladies to join us here in discussing Beverly Buchanan and a lot of the works in this show and some anecdotes around these pieces. Yeah. In 1971, she studies at the Art Students League with renowned abstract expressionist painter Norman Lewis. And I've seen it come up in multiple writings. First, she speaks about herself as a color impressionist early on in 72. Mm. And then the term abstract expressionist painter keeps mm -hmm. on coming up, which is a little bit surprising seeing her later pieces that mm -hmm. I was more familiar with, which are shack assemblages and these really yeah. colorful, vibrant images, yeah. but not so much abstract expressionist. Can you tell us a little bit about Beverly meeting Norman Lewis? and their relationship, and then also a little bit about Cinque Gallery. I will tell you what I've learned from Beverly. What she said to him when she first met him was, I loved your work before I knew you were black. That's very typical, Beverly's bluntness and her humor. Another story she told when she was in his class, he came up to all the students and asked them questions about what they were doing. He said, now, are you sure you want to put white there in this painting? She said, yeah. And he told her, you're good. You don't need me anymore. You want me to tell how she met Romare Bearden? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Romare Bearden and Norman Lewis were good friends. And eventually, after Beverly got to know Romare Bearden better, they did show her work at the St. Hugh Gallery, and that was a huge deal for her. At Alice Tully Hall, and it's a Dizzy Gillespie concert, Romare Bearden had done the poster for it, and the reason Beverly particularly wanted to hang on to that was that she's holding this poster, and she spots Romare Bearden, whom she had never met, but I guess she knew what he looked like, and she followed him, and then she realized she had followed him into the men's room. So then she describes how she backed out, and at that point, Norman Lewis realized what was going on, and he said, Beverly, I don't think you've met my friend Romare Beard. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great beginning. Beverly would take her drawings and paintings to Romare Bearden's fourth floor, walk up on Canal Street. I'm going to tell you one more thing about Romare Bearden. In early 2000s, and Beverly had won an award that was being presented to her in Atlanta. And the High Museum was showing the Bearden exhibition that the National Gallery of Art had put together. And before then, Beverly and I had adopted a brown tabby kitten that we named Romy. Well, Romare, but we called him Romy. And we walked into the exhibition, and the first image we saw was a photograph of Romare Bearden cradling his brown tabby that looked exactly like our Romy. Both <laughs> of us looked at each other and couldn't believe that. In this current exhibition, we also have some incredible early abstract paintings that Beverly was doing when she was studying urban decay and wall erosion in Harlem and Soho. Prudence, can you tell us a little bit about Beverly's practice? You'd mentioned to me these cardboard boxes that she was using and making the cast concrete works and the molds. Beverly was excited about the concrete block work. She would get pizza boxes, like Domino's pizza boxes, and cast concrete pieces in those pizza boxes. 
she would get any kind of concrete box that she could find and cast the concrete. She did it herself, she mixed the concrete, she formed it. They were really important pieces to her. Right. She positioned them in her yard and she kept many of those pieces. It was a very labor intensive process was, too. It, she only did it until the mid 80s. At one point she got to where she wasn't physically able to form the concrete pieces. It was important to her to put color into that concrete. Some color she would mix into the concrete, some color she would add on to the concrete, mm -hmm. and she investigated the colors, so it wasn't a haphazard thing with Beverly. And you can see her initials, BB, which you I think can. is so great. <laughs> and in some things you can see her little fingerprints. <laughs> it's fun to find little pieces of Beverly that she left behind for us. Beverly was an avid collector of designer chairs, of cars, of various items like wedding toppers, marbles, and figurines from local thrift stores. Tell me a little bit about this and how you think it also makes itself into her work, which we're showing right now with the Christmas trees and then the spirit jars too. Beverly loved going to thrift stores. I think her favorite was called the Potter's House at the time. And she would walk in and, oh my goodness, the room would light up because, oh, Beverly's here. <laughs> and we get to talk to her and she gets to go through and pick these things out. And, and other artists went to those places as well. And there were times when some of them would talk about having little fights over who's gonna get this and who's gonna get that, but Beverly usually won. <laughs> that was fun, but she did. She liked to collect things and use them in her art. And Jane, you mentioned you had a list of some of the things that Beverly collected. I did, I did. I, bottle caps, shells, canes, quarters, cigar boxes. I mean, it was endless. Earrings and Earrings, old jewelry. yes, old jewelry. I'm looking at the spirit jars and realized, yes, the jewelry came from one place, the shells from another person. I walked into my pharmacy one day and I saw these really interesting collages. And I said, oh, I like those. And I have all these little things that I don't want to throw away, but they're not worth keeping. <laughs> and I'd love to bring them in here if you think she would like them. So I started taking them in to the drugstore. And then one day I walked in and Debbie, one of the owners, said, oh, Prudence, there's Beverly, you know, the lady who does these. <laughs> I think that was also the start of a really great friendship for you oh guys. Oh, my gosh, and it was. I appraised real estate for a number of years, and I love architecture, and I love any kind of architecture. I started telling Beverly about some of those things, and she said, oh, I'd like to see. And I'm driving around by myself, and I thought, oh, I'd love to have company. So Beverly started riding around with me, and we'd stop and either take a comp photo that I needed or stop and take photos of something that she saw that she needed. That would then serve as inspiration for her... Inspiration. Arguably, most well-known body of work, her shocks. So her shock right. sculptures, That's photographs, right. and then her legends. And it was like, just about everybody Beverly met, just, they didn't forget her. And they wanted to see her <laughs> anytime they could because she was so entertaining and such a special person. I think maybe we can end with that. I don't know if you have a text that you wanted to share with us too. I found one of Beverly's little writings. And this I think is just an example of her wit. When the pickup appeared in the, di in the driveway, James saw that one door was hanging off the side. Using a crowbar, he let it fall to the ground. And when John Robert came home to get his new truck, James told him that this was one of a kind and cost $500 more than the other ones, just like it. <laughs> the works yeah. usually had text yeah. interspersed with images. Yeah. Uh, so very lively, which I think was the idea behind the color in this exhibition space too yeah. and the layout. But yeah, thank you guys so much. This has been such a treat and yeah, thank you again. <laughs>